It's Wes. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about using the Canon R5 while cycling. Yeah, that's right. You can file this under event photography or maybe special events photography because I went out cycling with a local cycling group and took my R5 along to document the ride. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. What's better than one good thing combining two good things like cycling and photography? Now cycling is an interest of mine, a hobby, and I like to commute to work when I can on my bike. So combining cycling and photography, it's a win-win. Well, it's not as easy as that. And I'm gonna share my experience shooting a cycling group and some tips for planning a special shoot like this one. Hopefully some of these thoughts and reflections can help you as you plan for a special event photography session and come out on top like a champ. All right, the backstory is we recently moved and I reached out to a local cycling group in my new area. I asked if I could join and if I could bring a camera. Tip number one, be upfront. Don't be a creeper. Communicate upfront and ahead of time if possible. If you have a special community that you're a part of, ask if there's a need to document the community's events. You can be an asset to the community. Use your camera for good, but ask up front. Now tip number two is set your priorities. Now I knew I was gonna go into this ride and my fitness wasn't what it used to be. I hadn't been running in the last six months, which was my go-to form of exercise. I knew it'd be a challenge just to engage in the exercise on the bike. So to keep it simple, I mentally clarified to myself and set a goal of just going on the ride and getting maybe three good shots. I wouldn't separate from the group and try to get shots ahead of the group or outside the group phase because it helped me keep calm, settle down, and enjoy the ride. Literally, that's a good tip. Tip number three, select your gear. Not your bike gear, but your camera gear. I plan to bring the Canon R5 with the RF35. I love how the 35 millimeter lens allows me to compose images that um, show the context. And it's flexible too, because I don't, I can't really predict the situation I'm gonna get into on the ride because I haven't been before. So I chose the uh, 35 millimeter lens, uh, lens for that reason. Now, I could have chosen the XE4 as my camera body, but I was thinking of shooting under pressure in a cycling group, um, keeping on the move. I chose the Canon R5 as my camera for this ride because of the autofocus. I knew I'd be hurried and pressured and I'd want to rely on the autofocus so I could think about some of the other concerns like traffic uh, and other considerations of doing an event photography from a bicycle. So tip number four, think of your workflow ahead of time. This was one area I thought about, but if I'm being honest, I didn't nail and I would do this differently. My first concern with workflow while shooting on a bicycle was how to carry the camera safely. I had recently purchased the Peak Design Everyday uh, Carry 6 liter sling and I had taken hiking the previous weekend when we went camping for my birthday. I thought it'd be a good choice to carry the camera, be safe, secure, and I'd be comfortable wearing a sling. Now the downside of the bag was I was hampered at every stop trying to get the camera ready to shoot. When at a, you're at a stoplight, you don't have time to unzip the bag and grab the camera, pull it out, flip the screen around, power it up and get the first shot um, composed. Every second counts in these situations. I should have done what another photographer on the right did, and that's wear a strap, uh, wear the camera on a strap around my neck. Evan was shooting the Fuji X-E3 and doing a great job. I know he probably got more shots off, because his camera was easily accessible. He even shot while he's riding down the street, no hands on his bike, which was awesome to see and uh, above my coordination level. This actually ties into my next tip, is consider your options. Should you try to make your gear more flexible or more portable? And truth be told, this is another area where I could have made a better choice. Along with the decision to wear the sling and carry the camera in the bag for security, I was also influenced in that decision why I could bring another lens. What's better than more gear, than more gear? Why bring another lens? So I knew or I prioritized that my most valuable images I could get from the ride would be portraits. Because I had already decided to document the ride from within the group, not cycling ahead or moving away from the group to get group type shots like set up ahead of time, I opted to bring the RF 70 to 200 so I could get closer shots than I'd be able to with my RF 35. While the RF35 is my favorite focal length, really I thought the 7200 would help me with my goal. In hindsight, I would have fared better if I carried my camera on a strap and stuck with one lens only. And it probably wouldn't have mattered which 
which lens I had because I would have adapted my shots to whichever I brought. Now, the ride went smoothly and I achieved my first goal, coming back intact, and my second goal, not to embarrass myself. And once I reviewed the images, you know, I, I achieved my third goal too, which was get some images to help document the ride and potentially pass back to the cycling group to see if they could use them to promote the group. So the basic operation of the shoot was like this, document with my phone a little bit while riding, but at stoplights, I dive into my bag, pull the R5 out, snap, snap off as many shots as I can get before the light changed. And it was fun and it was a challenge. And since I had prioritized shooting as I was participating in the ride and not separating from the group, I limited my options for shots. My shots were what I was able to get straddling my bike with my right foot against the curb and shooting to the side to get a profile shot of someone or back over my left shoulder to catch people's faces. Now, when we stopped at a liquor store, sort of a refreshment stop at the end, I hopped off the bike, I leaned it against the building, and I grabbed portraits of as many of the riders as possible. And here's tip number six. It's not really up to me as an event photographer to be embarrassed or bashful or hesitate. If there's a good moment for a photo, I need to get up, move, and grab it, period. That's your role. Swing in action, capture the moment, sacrifice your ego, and try to tell the story. And sure enough, as soon as I clicked off the last portrait at that final stop, the leader called for us to head out back to the starting point, only a half mile to go. Tip number seven, don't second guess yourself. If I wondered, should I really put my bike down and get those final portraits? I wouldn't have got some of the best shots. Set your priorities first and then don't second guess yourself. Trust your instincts. Now, reflecting on the journey with the R5, I can sum up what I would do differently. Number one, this is a situation for a camera strap instead of a bag. The moments I lost navigating the zipper and the enclosure, which actually was a bit narrow to easily pull the R5 out of, could have been saved by having the camera on a strap easily accessible. And one of the things that I didn't realize is when I took this on the hike, I had the Fuji inside and the Fuji has a much slimmer profile. It's easier to get in and out of the bag. Secondly, on a hike, there's no big pressure situation. I mean, we weren't seeing like big horn sheep or anything that I had to grab quickly. It was just a relaxing, easy hike. And so there's no time pressure. So I didn't really realize the time the bag would have cost me. And number two, I would choose one lens. Now, I'd probably go with the RF35 since it's my favorite focal length and allows more street style images showing the context. And I could always move in real close for portraits on a break. My favorite images from the ride are with the RF 70 to 200 because of the way the subject stands out from the background, the bokeh forms around the rider just like a dream. I think it's a pretty unusual combination getting these portrait quality images in the middle of the execution of a physical sport. Those images definitely stood out to me. So if I documenting the group for them, I would choose the RF 35. If I was shooting for myself, I'd go with the 70 to 200. I'd rather have three to five eye catching shots than dozens or a hundred. Uh, with the 35 millimeter that were sort of ordinary. There's something I did experience in this ride that I think a lot of uh, others did too, and that's, it made me feel like a kid again. Uh, the group got together for the joy of the ride, and while we, we got exercise and had some time to get to know each other, at the bottom line, no one was worried about our average speed or who they networked with on the ride. I felt like I was 13 and just powering down the asphalt with the joy and freedom that comes only from your own two pedals. So what good have you used your camera for lately? Share it with me in the comments. Leave a like if you liked any part of this video and subscribe if you're not subscribed. More videos on the Canon R5 coming up. That's it for this video. Peace.